I don't know if I want it any bigger or not. I think she might have figured it out. Over live? What? No. Shit. Hey, look. Watch it live now. Oh, hey. Flaming Meeple, Flaming Meeple live stream. I'm going to oh, hit that button. Right, right let me take my hat off. That is rude. <laughs> that was rude. All right. Mute that. Wow. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> look, that's us. I can hey. see you talking to me. Uh, what's up, everybody? I'm Danny. This is the Flaming Meeple YouTube channel. Um, got my friend Christopher Francis here. Uh... What's your Etsy store called? My oh. Etsy store is called Citizen and Relic. Citizen and Relic, yeah. That. I'm currently making bead jewelry, as I'm wearing here. Isn't it fabulous? Um, <laughs> Citizen and Relic, uh, all one word. Um, Etsy shop. Come check me out. Please. Check out his jewelry. Don't check him out. Please. I need the money. <laughs> um, so I've got a couple of things here. Uh, trying to do a big video, get all cut up on all the crap that I'm behind on. Uh, first thing is a little project that Eddie and I have been working on. So we've got a couple of prototypes here. Uh, Virgin 1 prototypes of dice trays we tried. Um, this one here is made out of chipboard from her Cricut fancy thing. Um, it was a good, it's a good design. The problem we had with it is we thought the walls were too tall. These were I think like two inches one, tall. One one and a quarter. These, were, no, these aren't one and a quarter, sweetie. Um, and so we figured maybe try to do something like this. Well, this one was just a little too short. Um, so we scrapped that one. So then they came up with this one, and it's what is it made out of? Not all that wood, is, it? is this one is all wood. It is. Um, Baltic birch. Baltic birch. Um, the second prototype was just simple basswood from Michaels. Um, and then it's just a little stain on there. Um, and so the wood is uh, hand cut with the 45 degree angles and figured I would try to get a little fancy and get a little too fancy. You can see the gaps there on parts of it. Uh, so that's a version 2 prototype, still getting a feel for what works and what doesn't. I do like the felt on the bottom, and then they were able to take the Cricut again and kind of do a vinyl uh, vinyl applique of my my logo for my Etsy store, which is kind of cool. Um, it's kind of cigar box size, so like if you travel, you know, it makes good. The felt helps it uh, kind of bounce around a little bit and, and soften the blow. That's a good idea, a lid. Yeah. Make a lid for it. Remember I was doing that with cigar boxes? Yeah. yeah kind of the same idea, yeah. But I mean, and then it has a tray for like the, the dice that you're not using at the moment. You can actually, you know, put them in the side here where you're not using them. Don't so it's zoom cool. in. It's okay. Let her do it. I already Go have. crazy. <laughs> Go crazy with it. So, yeah, so this is so this is the prototype that, that he gave me for my birthday, and I'm very, very happy with it. Can't wait to see what the real ones look like, so. Actually, looks very good when she, when she does that, so. Oh, yeah. yeah. Plus, take your ugly face out of it. Anyway, so that's project one that he's working on. Yep. Um, well, well, that's project two. Yeah. Project well, one's still the basement. Yeah. So, so what made you decide to start doing this? I saw some on Kickstarter, and I like the design of them. Um, and I don't know, I just figured it's something I can make myself, and make some for myself, make some for friends. Um, if people want to buy one, great, that's awesome. Um, but, you know, really it's just something for, for myself and for my friends. You know, when we get the game room finished up. Um, Probably wouldn't want to say buy one of the prototypes. I'd say buy it when, like, you actually have, like, a really good working demo. Well, yeah, obviously don't buy one of the shitty prototypes. So, I mean, you know. Can't buy mine. I'm keeping it. I will totally sell his. What a jerk. Oh, totally like you'll, you'll get the final Free version. advertising. Yeah, yeah, yeah free yeah, advertising. Yeah. Free yeah. advertising for $50, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Totally. So, that's cool. I like that. Love the dice too, by the way. Oh yeah, these, these are the elder dice that you get from uh, Kickstarter. Kickstarter, um, Thundercrack Games. Is that who makes them? No, that is. It's John Butler. Infinite Black. Infinite Black. That's it. Infinite yeah, yeah. Black. That's who yeah. makes it. Cool. So now we have a couple games that we want to open. Let's start with a small one. What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? Hey, so this, this is Danny's one... address in case you want to like uh, give him hate mail. You know, you want to send me free stuff. Just let me know. Yeah. Little bubble mailer here. I know what's in it. I think Chris knows what's in it. I don't know what's in it. I thought I told you what was in it. What? Oh, we all, I thought you already opened that. No, cool. no. Tiny Ant Zombies. Very cool. 
Uh, one of the Kickstarter games I backed, it's the Deluxe Edition, it was 25 bucks. I have not played any of the Tiny Epic games before, so I honestly have no idea what to expect. Cool. Have, have you? I have not. Uh, I know that there's a bunch of them. I know the Tiny Epic Quest yeah. is basically like Zelda in a box, which is supposed to be really cool. Um, but they have several different uh, iterations of it. Well, um, there's one, I think they're, like, with Quest and this one, they started adding a lot more weapons and stuff that you can actually attach to them. Yeah. Which is kind of neat, so, but let, let's open the box and see what happens. I did see that on the Kickstarter, so. Spoiler alert. Oh. Got rules, kind of need those. So this is, I think these are the Kickstarter exclusives in here. Maybe. The rule books look like it's really well, well written. Hard for me to say. Um, lots of pictures, so he can read it. Um, yes. Seems like it's laid out really well. Shows the different game modes. Is that you? That was me. That is me. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. So those look like the, the so, Kickstarters. Yeah, I think these are the Kickstarter exclusives. So we got a um, we got the lawyer. Flips into zombie mode. The burglar. The farmer. And the trucker. Cool. Then we've got some... We've got a little doggo. Little doggo meeple. She's actually cuter oh, as, a, as a zombie. She, if it was going to take 15,000 regular meeples for me to cover the front of the bar... It would take you, you a hundred thousand of that size. Do you think this would be better covering with little meeple doggos? No, because it would take you forever. Yeah. No. Um, so we got a little meeple doggo. Uh, one of the game pieces got a card, and we've got a little meeple bazooka that um, it's got a card with it too. One of the weapon cards. Yep. I think these are also Kickstarter uh, options. Yeah, I think well. so. That's kind of cool. What else is in the box? Come on, come on, come on, come on. So we've got. Oh God, these are tiny meeples. The name of the game is Tiny Epic Zombies. Yeah, but I mean, you know. Tiny. <laughs> yeah, but. Epic. But, zombies. But meeples are all. Okay. The, the meeples are all what, Danny? Meeples are all like. Tiny? Meeples are that size. <laughs> <laughs> then you would need a bigger box and it would just be called Epic, epic zombies? zombies. So we got to. <laughs> We got some vehicles here, a uh, motorcycle and a police car. Those are and I know they, cool. they they come with I think they come with cards also. Just haven't opened the card pack yet. Those are neat. It's printed. It's not engraved or anything no. like that, which is cool. Which was one of it's the not um, a sticker, which I'm a big fan of. Which being printed on, I think, was one of the stretch goals. Yeah, it looks like that they were all screen printed yeah, instead like of printed. Um, just blank. Yep. And so all the all the zombies. Are all screen printed also? Very cool. Um, oh, got even tinier, epic. More tiny and more epic in this one. Holy crap. So you have a bag that's about two inches by two inches, and there's probably 30 meeples in there. Yeah. Just This one right here has all the zombies, has, uh, looks like wound markers in it. Uh, the cool. bullets for the weapons. Mm -hmm. And that's some. Chris has more counters there. Yeah, these look like counters for uh, possibly objectives or situations like if you're bitten or if you're poisoned or stuff like that. Made out of cardboard chits. Um, yeah, this is and a family. really thick cardboard, actually. This is a family channel. Chit. C H I T. Chit. Yeah, yeah, that, I, chit. I'm not talking about what you did earlier. Your piece of chit. Chit. How do you open this thing? Um, there should be a little plastic tab on those. These are really thick, um, very well, very well made. Let's see if you can find it. I can't find it. All right. Well, you play with something else while I do that. Very well done. I like that. Here. I can't find it. Well, it's right there. Where? Right there. Go ahead. Keep going. I'm probably taking me half an hour to, to, to do this anyway. This is fast. Stream's going fingers. fine. We have all, all two viewers, and I think on the other one. Yeah. Yeah. All right, now these are the separate them out a little bit. 
get a better idea what's going on, show them off. Are those actual, are they situation cards or are they the map? Those are the map, the objectives, and the other characters. Oh, wow, cool. So we've got all of our map pieces. They're all double-sided, too, so. The maps turn into zombies. You got the cooperative and competitive sides for the um, scoreboards. And then we've got our map, so Echo Ridge Food Court, Coffee Bar, So I'm sure there will be a review of this game eventually after we play it. Eventually. It is uh, on the list, as is everything else that is still in shrink wrap in the basement. Uh, Along with everything else that's in the basement. Along with everything else that is in the basement. Dead bodies. Robots. Did not fit in there as pretty as when I took it out. That's, that's disappointing. Uh, it didn't all fit back. So the next game is one that has gotten a lot of buzz on some of the uh, some of the big channels like Dice Tower and all. This is called Nyctophobia. Yeah. Um, a, one of the stories about this that I remember is that the girl that developed it, uh, she has uh, she wanted to develop a game that she could play with her aunt or one of her family members who had uh, who was sight impaired. So um, she came up with this game. I haven't seen it played and I haven't seen a lot of the components. But I've heard nothing but good about it. So, the game is called Nyctophobia Vampire Encounters. Very, very stark box here. And so, as you can tell from the title, the objective is to survive the vampire. Um, so, it's uh, three to five players. So,. You will have one player who is a vampire. Oh, lens bro. Uh, one player who is a vampire, and then the remaining players are wearing blackout glasses. Can't see anything, right? I cannot see anything. I can see here, the periphery is here, but I can't see right in front of me. So, I mean, if I'm looking down at the table, I can, I can see him through the periphery, but I can't see what's going on on the table. Call you Stevie Francis. So right here we've got our... Who said that? We've got our terrain, um, which is just all white uh, plastic. Um, so the trees and... <laughs> so these are completely blacked out. You cannot see anything through these. That's actually really cool. I like that. I'm, I'm really looking forward to playing this. So all the, all the trees and other little components here are all white. Do they glow in the dark? I believe so, because you're supposed to have the lights out. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Oh, maybe that's another one I was thinking of. No, that Target. Yeah, Target. Um, um, by the way, Target has really stepped up their board game selection. Game selection. Um, um, because they've got this. They've got. This, this, they've got. They've got I mean, they had. They had. Four. Um, um. They've got. They've got uh, uh, another one. Another one that I'm drawing, drawing, drawing on the name, on the name but, but it is. It is Similar, similar concept, concept where you turn, where you turn lights, out the lights and, and you have you this little mini horse directed in front of you, front of you, front of you and, and one person, one person is, is playing the bad playing guy, the bad guy and everyone else is trying to stop the bad guy. But the field, field of view is, is limited, limited to only one what, little, little tiny, tiny um, battery powered, powered lamp and see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mute the mute the microphone on them. I don't think that one because. I'm, I'm hearing, hearing every everything thing twice, twice, and it's kind of, kind of sucks, sucks in my, in my ear, ear. Really, really? It's better now. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. Hey. Roger, Roger. Yes. No. That actually sounds really cool. I know. <laughs> I'm sitting here listening to myself going, "Wow, look at me." Um, wow, so, wow, wow, wow! Look, 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 look at it. So this is this is the rule book. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it uh, is very well laid out. There are scenarios in the rule book. What I like about this is that it is colorblind friendly. Uh, everything in here is black and white and there's red. So even if you're colorblind, it's going to come off as being gray. And you still should be able to read that. Are you full colorblind? Like you can't see colors at all? What if you don't see color? Um, this so is 2018, good sir. Okay, so I'm actually talking about those with the vision impairment colorblindness. I really tried to keep it a straight yes, face. Yes, I was, really couldn't do it. Um, the, the fonts are big. It looks like typewriter uh, font, so it's, it's pretty neat. 
Um, it's very, very well laid out, and there's not a, really a whole lot of rules, and there's a turn order on the very back that you could probably play the game from just by itself. So, very well done. We have some of the tokens that are like real anatomic heart tokens. It looks kind of cool. Very well, very thick. A couple of the standees. Very sturdy. Very sturdy. And the and the standees are cool because there's a picture on the front and the back, and it's not actually this. It's not the same picture. It's actually like their backside and their front side, which is kind of neat. That's really cool. I like this. Yeah. This is neat. That's what the little standee goes in. Oh yeah. So yeah, have a little. Now does this? The only thing I'm, I'm concerned with is, is that going to damage on. the standee. No, the way the the way the holders made it yeah. looks like it. If you notice, it does put a oh, little bit, yeah. a little a little nick in there, but it doesn't it doesn't really damage it. So. You totally get a model. Yeah. But yeah, you could use any type of model and be perfectly fine with that. So yeah, that's kind of cool. So like the object of this game, from what I've been told, is like you're supposed to escape like a vampire who's trying to hunt you down and suck your blood and all that. Yeah. And but you, but the only one that can see is the vampire. So. You, so you're kind of going through the, the board blind and somebody is telling you which way to go with that and how to how to get there. And so all so your standees are gonna fit in these little in the big holes here and in the little holes we're gonna put like your hedgerows and stuff like that. That's kinda of neat. Yeah. I was trying to look through and see if uh Yeah, it, it doesn't do a whole lot of damage to it. It's not anywhere near as bad as some of them, but it no. does, does a pretty good does a pretty good deal with that. I like that. Yeah. I'm still trying to find what the uh, each of the cards are. It's a good thing like we can the, edit this part out. The W N E. That part means. Well. I bet it means north, south, east, and west. You know what? I think you might be right because I see it right here, marking on the uh, on the map. So yeah, good job. put those down and stuff looking like as much of an idiot. Um, See, so yeah, the board goes together pretty easily. You just you know, pop the pieces in there. Um, then all these, all these um, barrel-looking ones are the character pieces. And there is a car in here somewhere also that is kind of just represented by this little piece here. Okay. And like I said, all of this was meant so that like people who have sight impairment would be able to play this and be able to pick up a piece and be able to tell what it is. Yeah. So that's really, really neat how they've done that. Now, I can't tell if this is... I'm trying to see if it's glow in the dark. It is possible that it is glow in the dark. That fits, that's quite nice. I yeah. like that. Very cool. It's, it's simple and... I like it. I dig it. It probably says so in the rule book, but we didn't have the wherewithal to even look at that, did we? That, that's Addie's, Addie reads the rules for me. I don't ever read the rules. I just play the game. Tell the heart. Nah. <laughs> Threw his heart out the window. It's a good yeah, thing we can like this, huh? Yeah, so this yeah, seems like it's going to be a really, really neat game. I'm looking yeah, forward to it. This is going to be fun one. to play. Yeah. These things are legit. These are not sunglasses. I wonder if you could use these for an eclipse. Like you like put like little pinholes in them for the... For I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to try it because these are too expensive. And you said you wanted them broke, right? Yeah, one of them that I tossed back in the box was yeah. already broken. We can fix oh, it. Oh, wow. How do they work over your other glasses? Oh, uh, they don't. Yeah, I totally see what you mean by out here on the side. But yeah, you really, you really can't see anything. Really, you're trying to break my phone. That's great. Awesome. Again? Yeah, that's twice. Wow. Yeah. I dig this. This is yeah, this, this is, is gonna a, be fun. This is a neat concept. Um, what's the lady's name that that came up with this? No, oh, don't spill it. Catherine Stipple. Catherine, this is this looks awesome. And as soon as we get to uh, play of it, I'm sure there'll be a review of it. I've heard a lot of positive about it. This is a really cool concept. Totally All game. for it. Good for you. Another great game by Pandasaurus Games. Pandasaurus does create some really cool stuff. Dinosaur Island. The cards look really, really cool, by yeah. the way. It's very, very uh, neo-goth horror. 
Uh, again, they're all black and white in white and black with a little bit of red. So, very, very cool. Are you ready for the cool stuff? Oh, God, yes. All I've right. been waiting for this forever. So, oh my God. every now and then, mm, <laughs> when you yeah. back stuff on Kickstarter, which is a, a bad habit, by the way, it's every a now and then, you get a, um, a box in the mail that makes you giggle inside a little bit. This is that box. This be it. This is everything from the Song of Ice and Fire from Cool Mini or Not, or CMON Limited as they like to be called. Got this at my door about three weeks ago or so, and I promised him I wouldn't even open anything in this box until we could do this live. Yeah. It's a promise. So I'm going to open the box, I'm going to show you what's in it, and then we're going to open these boxes piece by piece. Put it down here so I can see. We played this at uh, CMON Expo back mm -hmm. in what, May? Uh, yeah, played this in May. Absolutely loved it. And it was absolutely fantastic. For those who don't know, it's a skirmish style war game where you are uh, de developing armies of a certain amount of points. I think it's like 40 or 50 points, but you can Something do as like much that, as you yeah. want. And um, you ha what's cool about it is that the rules are very simple, very easy to use, but there's also non combat units that sit on the side that alternate uh, each round that can affect how your uh, how your units move or how, they, how they're affected by other things. And all. But we'll show you a little bit about that. So when you open this box, the base game is at the bottom of the box. We have some stuff to go through before that. So when I open the box, the first thing I see here is a box of the neutral heroes. And this is where you're going to find like your Ramsey Boltons and your Theon Greyjoys, Peter Baelish, Lord Varys, uh, a bunch of the really weird people on the show. But this is all based off of the the Game of Thrones uh, books, not uh, not the movies or not not the not the HBO show. So this is Neutral Heroes One. Then we have the Stark Bowmen, which are basically you have. 12 miniatures in here, and there's four different sculpts of the miniatures, which if you want to take a look at that, that's actually really cool. The sculpts are really the nice. The sculpts are really nice, so you can tell which ones are which. Um, all of these are going to come with their own uh, Legion cards and stuff like that as well. Um, let's see, let's do... Bolton's Bastard Girls. Um, you can kind of put it a little bit to the side if you want to. Um, this is going to have, again, 12 miniatures. There's going to be a couple different sculpts for the dogs. Uh, and a couple for the hunters as well, which I think is really neat. Really, really cool. This picture in picture actually is working really well. Kudos to you. It's awesome. Oh, wow. Um, the artwork on the front's really, really cool. You know, check on that for a second. Get my fingers out. All the things we can do with modern technology, yep. kids. Uh, let's see. We also have one for ah, the Knights of Casterly Rock. Uh, and these are your big units. This is your, your mounting units where instead of being 12 on a tray, there's four on a tray. And there's four different uh, four different sculpts for that. Again, really super cool. They're really, really well detailed, and um, look, they look really great there. Can't wait to pop that one open. Um, giggity, giggity. Lannister heroes. Now this is where you're going to find Tyrion Lannister and the High Sparrow and uh, Sandor Clegane, also known as Mount the Mountain. Very good. Um, I know, I didn't I know his it. first name. I just knew yep. he was... Yep. Clegane. I actually, uh, Sandor Clegane no, is that's actually the in the Hound. Hound. That's right. That's the Hound. Um, yeah, the Mountain's in one of the other boxes yeah. here. Looking forward to this one. Now, I think Tyrion is both a non-combat unit and a combat unit in here, which I think is kind of cool. If I remember correctly, um, yeah. This one was not in the box, but I wanted to show this one off anyway. This is one we got from Simon Expo. This is the Captain's... Uh, what do they call this? Captain's uh, promo set. Um, so this is one of the, each of the captains for the, for the fighting sides. And there's a couple extra cards in there that are actually really cool to use. We'll break that open too. Yeah. Set that right there. Everybody that played uh, the demo at Simon Expo all got one of these. Yeah. So I've got one sitting in the basement yeah. somewhere so these, too. So these are very, very hard to find because that's the only place they had them as far as I know. Stark Heroes number one. This is a great set because this is going to have Brandon Hodor, which is one, uh, one piece. Eddard Stark, Roderick Cassell... Brendan Tully, Summer, uh, the Wolf, 
who is when we played. Yeah, that's owned the one the that game. owned the game. She owned that, the category. She, she was absolutely fantastic. So this is a great set there. Uh, there's some of the sculpts right there for it. But the the the, the ones that are in here are really really nice. Summer's yeah. a lot of fun to play with. We still haven't gotten to the base game yet. Um, this is the Bolton Flayed Men. This is another one of the. Uh, this is one of the neutral side um, mounted units. So there's only four sculpts in here, but those sculpts, take a look at that. These are ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous how, how awesome these things look. Um, you know, you have the chain flail and everything, and then the horse with the, looks like it's got, instead of unicorn horn, looks like it's got like a big chef knife. knife right there. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Let's see, what else we have here? Okay, so the big thing with this one, we're still not at the, at the, uh, at the game yet. The Hand of the King promo box. This is the only thing that wasn't sealed in here. Now this one has a lot of really cool stuff, in, including the first player marker, which we'll show in a little bit. Um, we'll probably show this. Oh, is that the? Yes. Oh. We'll show this one after we open the regular box. Yeah. I'm gonna set this down right here, and then this is the base game. Jesus. Song of Ice and Fire, there are 103 minis in this. Those are all the trays that you need and everything for your for your um, for your cavalry units and all that. A bunch of dice and everything. This is a gargantuan box. That is massive. Yep. This by itself, when it goes retail, is gonna be anywhere between $120 to $150. So it was really worth it to be able to do, do the Kickstarter for this. But I'm tired of this being in plastic. Good. God. Let's uh, let's open this. Do you Where's have the scissors? Do you have the scissors? I have the scissors. Addie right has the scissors. Thank you, Addie. Now my ear fell off. That's Sorry. Right. That's all right. You're um, reflecting right on the box. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I actually, now you say that, it actually makes sense. Not only is Addie my wife, she is our production manager, too. Yeah. She, she's ironing out the kinks for us here. I can't believe I've, I've held on to this and haven't uh, opened this yet. I, I'm glad. I made you, a promise to you. I'm glad you did. Oh my god. I'm about to be really, really excited here. Good thing the table is, is sturdy. So, this We're not box. Not keeping tables anymore, yeah, so don't be yeah, yeah, yeah. that. I know. Yeah, th this box is hermetically sealed, so it is meant to uh, build anticipation here. Oh, it even comes with some punch up terrain. Yep. The rule book is 32 pages. And it's in a beautiful font, easy to read, pictures. You'll like that. So if any of you are familiar with any tabletop war games, 32 pages for a rule book is impressive. Yeah. It's, very, uh, it's a very simplified book. It has to do with ranks and files. Um, marching orders are pretty simple in this as well. But it's extremely well laid out. The art is absolutely gorgeous. It's... This is a phenomenally well done rule book. Of course, it's Simon, it's Eric Lang, and Michael Chanel. You guys have put out an amazing product. We haven't even gotten started with that though, but I'm very excited about this. Um, this, uh, these are all punch boards. Uh, these are your victory point counters <laughs> body and pile. body piles, nice. and these look like terrain markers. I'm sorry, I uh, like. Uh, I think they are terrain markers. Yeah, uh, what are these called? Like broken fence lines and stuff like that. Um, of course, you have hills and all that. Now, I know that they actually had some extra Kickstarter stuff that you could do, damage markers and all that, where you actually got like actual hills and stuff like that. But that was like uh, $150 more for that, if I remember right, something like that. I did not do that, but you can absolutely do that. And a lot of you war gamers are going to play this anyway, or are going to have a lot of terrain anyway, so just use that same type of terrain. Um, they want this played on a 4x4 four four, uh, field, a 4x4 four foot, four foot field, so um, we're going to have to yeah. make a bigger table. Yeah. Anyway, anyway. yeah. Now we have it to the project list. We have... Some of, of the cards, uh, condition cards. What I like about these is that it shows all your unit actions. So you could literally play the game from these cards right here. Because it shows what all the actions do, how they work. It shows the conditions like panicked and vulnerable and weakened and what they mean. And then on the flip side, 
Um, you, um, on, they'll have uh, some of the other instructions, but on the rest of the cards, you'll have uh, other scenarios like castle walls, how many wounds they can take, how much armor they have, or I'm sorry, arrows, who can uh, who can be put placed on them, and all. So it's really, really, really cool stuff there. These are some of the objective cards. How do I know? Because it says objective on it. Uh, mm -hmm. Objective. Well, that's what I'm guessing. That's what it said. It had an O. I didn't know they taught that. Um, well, they didn't. Mm -hmm. I had to learn that in here. Uh, so these are going to be some of the objectives that you can place throughout the the, the field and actually kind of take to, to get victory points or to get uh, certain advantages during the game. This is where the meat of the, of the game is right here. And this pile here are your character cards. And the first one you see on the top there is Sir Jamie Lannister, the Kingslayer. So I'm going to pop this. I'm going to actually pop this one open so you can kind of get an idea of what it looks like. And folks, this is how you open it. To everybody who makes these little game decks like this and doesn't have pull tabs and all, this is how you make it. You make it so they can be opened instead of being sealed for the end of time. Simon, well done with that. Jamie Lannister, Gregor Cle Clegane, Captains, Assault Veterans, there's another Gregor Cle Clegane. Actually, that's one uh, that's uh, that's a different sculpt of him, and I'm sure, sure I'll show that. So what it will show, his uh, special abilities on the front and on the back, it's friggin' great art. Just... And it uh, has uh, what type of unit he is and how many health he has on there, as well as uh, what, uh, what faction he works with. Uh, another Jamie Lannister, Rob Stark, the Umbers. Those guys were fun. Remember the Umber, Umber Berserkers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, the, that's the unit that yep. uh, the mountain's attached to, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, Tyrion Lannister, you know, that, that's one of his uh, non-combat ones. Uh, Tyrion, Cersei... Also a non-combat unit. And uh, actually there's another board in here that I'll show you in a minute that, that shows what all the non-combat abilities are like and all that, but it's really, really neat. Caitlyn Stark, Sansa Stark, and then they have some victory points uh, and secret missions that you can play with as well. You don't have to play with the secret missions, um, but it's kind of cool if you do, especially when you get to play enough of the game that you're kind of used to how the game works. Like this one says, reveal this mission at the start of any turn, score one victory point this round each time you attack an enemy from the flank or the rear. So if you like it from behind, you get victory points. <laughs> and there's others that have different scenarios that, that, that talk about. It's all tactic based. Like if you do this or if you attack this way, then you get points for it that way. It's really, really neat. There's a bunch of these. I uh, forgot how much was in there. There's so Jesus. many cards in here ridiculous um these are siege defenders so like if you're playing kind of tower defense style because there's several different uh ways to play here it gives you some of the uh of the topic cards with those as well um they have the attacker cards as well as the siege defender cards uh that have different things on it say remove two terrain pieces from the battlefield so basically you just kind of take it and throw it and uh, like, like throw the catapult yeah. and blows, blows up the stuff on the battlefield then you have a lot of uh, your strategy cards like Subterfuge and a Lannister pays his debts uh, that happens that give different things like when panic tests happen or when enemy units are destroyed. Um, there's some more that are made specifically for uh, the units themselves. Like for example, there's going to be certain cards that are made for Jamie Lannister and certain that are made for Rob Stark and so on and so forth like that. Um, where it gives him, like this one says, Expert Parry. When a friendly combat unit is attacked with melee after uh, attack rice is rolled, each defense save roll of six blocks two hits. So every time you roll a six on these die, yeah, it's, instead of blocking one hit, it's blocking two. Uh, if that unit contains Jamie Lannister, roll, rolls of five block two. So that makes it really, really, really powerful. So, yeah. um,. But there's a whole deck of things for him. There's uh, stuff for the mountain here. Instead of maneuvering, that unit may pivot and then make a charge action for free. If this house is gain unit, it gains plus two to its charge distance roll, so it can actually go two inches further on the battlefield. Um, more subterfuge. Counterplots. Seems like we got a lot of the Jamie Bannister in there. But yeah, but this is still the base set. We haven't even gotten to the minis yet. Um, Dire Wolf, 
This is all the Stark stuff. Yeah. Uh, Great Umber. Let's see here. Where, let me see if I can find Rob Stark. This unit may make free retreat action and restore up to D3 wounds. Basically, you take a, 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 a six-sided die and you roll it, and then you take half of whatever uh, whatever it says. So, um, if that unit is within long range of what Rob Stark, that means within like I think six to eight inches of Rob Stark, any enemy mm -hmm. they disengage also become vulnerable. That's incredible. Yeah, I think that was eight inches. Yeah. Um, in the rule book, not what you know, right? Um, the North remembers. I mean, so these are all tactic cards that you can use in. The game, like I said, this this is all just stuff that's in the base game right now. So I was just looking at the artwork some more. <laughs> it looks like Adrian Smith. Yeah, I, th uh, I think it is actually Adrian Smith. Um, the the dice here, you're going to come with ten dice, actually eleven dice. The white die is actually your D three. It has one on two sides, two on two sides, and three on two sides. So you don't have to take six and, and divide it. You can just take that one and do it as it is. Now we get to the cool. Now stuff. the fun part. Um, so, everything in here is sealed pretty nicely, as you can see. I think there's tape. There might be tape on this. Might be tape. I only on. say that because I see it. There might be tape on all four sides here. So the first thing you notice is that these trays are really, really, really big and really, really nice. Um, you're going to have unit trays for your 12 units. This is going to be kind of your standard. Uh, um, Non-mounted units, and then your mounted units are going to be fours. Um, let's see if I can... There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot of tape on here. But these... What I also like about them is that they have notches taken out of them on the sides, so you can actually grab the, uh, the, the, the tray there. You also have the arrow, which shows which direction is forward, and then you have the four points which show line of sight. Mm -hmm. So like if, if it's within this range here, it's within line of sight. Or if it's here, it's flank. Or if it's here, it's from behind. So they make it where it's really, really easy to figure it out. Same thing with the, the trays for your, uh, your uh, non-mounted units as well. And then you have some units uh, that are made for singles. Like uh, I think the mountain is, is one big unit. And again, the same. Summer, right? Summer is, yeah. is one as well. Same idea. <clears throat> it has, um, has everything you need there to, to kind of make it where it's super simple to figure out where everything goes and which way everything is supposed to, to, to go here. Underneath here, we have some of the, of the, of the skulls here. Like these are some of the mount, mounted units. Look at this skull. This is just amazing. I'm going to turn that yeah. a little bit up. There's no bending in, in the in the sword or anything like that. Just looks really, 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 really good. I really like that. It's beautiful. These really should be painted, but I'm not a painter, so I probably won't do that. Um, then you also have kind of your standard bearers. If you want to sit down, you can. Um, again, look, they look really great painted. They are perfectly straight. There's no bending on them, but even if they were bent, you know, a little hot water can, can fix that. Yep. Not a big deal. Simon's uh, injection molding process is Top super. notch. Top notch. I mean, there, there's minimal flashing on there if, if you are going to paint them. You, know, you clean the flashing up on the sides and all that. But it's very minimal. It's really purely ready to go. So if you look at this, it show, even shows you where everything goes. Um, what tray has what in it and everything. It's, so it's all real. It's all there yeah. written down for. That would have been nice for Rising Sun. Put it back in the box. Blood yep. Rage yep. and Zombicide yep. and oh, everything else Simon has made so far. This was a great idea. Fantastic idea. That. Do it for everything else. These are the the Lannister sides. Again, you're going to see a lot of really cool sculpts here. This one is not taped. This is one of your halberds. Again, look at look how straight that thing is. It's really cool. These sculpts are absolutely incredible. And it shows where everything fits in here, and there's little nooks and crevices for everything here. This is one of the, uh, the, the, the halberd captains. Just it's incredible. Deep. And then the, I can see the mountain. Oh, yeah, yeah. Check here. out the mountain down here. Yeah, we've got, we've got to do this one. Yeah. This is Gregor's game right there. 
He is immense. Love this thing. I love that. And underneath here, we have more of the, of the Lannister team. Um Again, more of the halberd. These are the, kind, kind of the base units here. Yeah. Your halberds and then your, uh, your, your footmen here. A um, couple of the captains are going to be here. Again, just really, really, really well done. I'm going to slip this back in here. Without knocking it off. Without knocking it off. Oh, it would be hilarious. Uh, where's that? Is that, is that, is that the... Yeah. yeah. And it shows you where everything goes right back in there. Slides back in place. Slip the little split right there. Very, very neat. That's that box. Oh, I, oh yeah, I forgot these. Um, these are some of the Starkmans. Um, let me see if I can pop this open here. There's a wolf unit in there that it looks really cool that I want to say hi to. Summer? Is that Summer? No, Summer's actually in one of those. Oh, it's Senior? Yeah. yeah, but this is one of the, oh, of yeah. the one units. I mean, I mean, it's, this might be a mold for Summer, but I know there's a second one that has yeah, different abilities yeah. with it. Really, really super cool. This one is... This one looks like Great and Umber. Look at that sword. Look at the detail in the, in the back of that, or, or this fur coat. Or his furs, I should say, not the fur coat. That's just amazing. These, these sculpts are incredible. Absolutely incredible work, guys. Well done with this. I think this is super cool. I think he kind of goes in something like that, or chopping that guy's head off. He doesn't need to. Um, but yeah, just your, your shield bearers, your, uh, your footmen, simpler sculpts, again, perfect. I mean, there's no bending in, in the in the sword or anything. They're just absolutely perfect. So this this is, you know, for even even if this was one hundred and fifty dollars at, at its at its peak, you're you're getting an amazing totally amount of stuff in it. Yeah. Totally, totally worth it. Um, I am a big fan of this. And what's also cool about it, if I remember right, a lot of these are numbered. Check this out. Waiting. One moment. Production Technical problems. difficulties. So check this out. If you look there, it actually has a number on I think that one's A4. And it actually will show you in the rule book or actually in here where A4 goes. And uh, like in, in like in some of the scenarios, I'll tell you, you're going to need Sculpt A4 or B3 or whatever. So you can look on those and uh, find out where everything where it goes. Now, I know there's also companies like uh, Broken Token and a lot who are making boxes for stuff like that that are going to fit these specifically as well. That's why they number them like that. So... Really, really cool stuff there. Um, oh, that's upside down. Uh -huh. So, this looks awesome. But, like I said, this is only the base game. I want to actually open the, 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 the King's Hand yeah. box. Because everything else you're going to see in there is going to be pretty much a lot more of the same. Where you're getting more of the, uh, the cards. Dudes. More of the dudes. Yeah. More of the cards and stuff like that. I want to see what's in the... Yeah. So the king's yeah. hand is actually what is the bee's knees here. Rule book is amazing. All right. So I mean, you just don't find a war game that has a rule book of only thirty-two pages. It fits so nicely. Everything and everything fits nicely in the box. The box fits together. Nothing sticks out or anything like that. It's again super well made. Now the king's hand. This is one of the special that you probably won't be able to get anymore. Hand of the King, excuse me. This is the only thing that wasn't sealed. You haven't seen anything in this, have you? No, I haven't. Okay, so this is brand new to Danny. He's probably going to wig out on this one. I, the only thing I've seen for a uh, Song of Ice and Fire game is what I've seen in the uh, Song of Ice and Fire mm -hmm. Facebook group yeah. for talking about gameplay and asking rules questions to mm -hmm. Chanel and sure. Eric. So it comes looking like this. There is a cover right here to protect this these pieces right here. You're seeing a lot more of the units. You've got some more Stark units. You have some of the different, uh, like, uh, some of the different molds or the alternate molds for some. You have one, a mold here, that is of George R. R. Martin himself. What? Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. I have the high cynicals there. That's him. And he's actually a non-combat unit, so he can actually uh, affect the game oh, wow. as well. But what I really want to show you, and I'm going to show you before I show Danny. Oh, jerk. I'll just open up the stream on my phone. That, right there, is your first player marker. And everybody knows what this is. That's the Iron Throne. 
me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. This is this is your first oh player. Oh my record. god! Holy sh! Nike. That needs to be painted. That's I don't care who it is. But yeah, hold that up for, for her camera beautiful. a little bit so you can so we can take a look at that. Oh my god! I I just want this. I'm sure if we can go to Simon Expo, they might be able to get you that. That is really I'm sure important. if I go to Gigabyte's Cafe, I could purchase this whole set for... Well, if Michael has it, yes. Yeah. Um, you also have another one of the, uh, of the unit trays for your mounted units. But what's in here is cool. It's super cool. So you have a bunch of your, uh, your situation tokens. Instead of them being plastic chits... Again, you, have them, uh, you, know, you have them in plastic as opposed to, to paper and all that, so all really cool. Um, the coins look like metal coins, even though they're also plastic. Really, really neat. Uh, you have some of the cards for some of the alternate sculpts, like one called Gregor Cl Clegane, the mountain that rides. Well, what that means is that there is a sculpt in here. Is there a horse that could actually hold the mountain? Yeah, it's called Clydesdale. That's a weird name for a horse. That's the mountain that rides. So you have a seven and a half foot giant on a horse that is probably, I don't know, probably nine feet tall to its shoulder. That is insane. It is ridiculous. That is so cool. I love the artwork. Uh, I mean, I love the detail that's even on the, uh, on the shield right there. Even the little things. They've taken care of everything. But you have... Let's see if I can open this a little bit further here. He's over here drooling on this, guys. It's like I don't think I don't think I would get this back if I ever gave it. Addy. Um, here's the one for Might have George R.R. R. Martin. This is the high cynical. Um, it looks just like him, except he's got long hair and a big fat beard, uh, and he's holding the book, and I think he's got a quill in his hand. Uh, he is one of the non-combat units in this uh, in this game. So cool. This was a Kickstarter exclusive. I don't know if they're making any more of this. If they are, cool. If not, cool. But um, that, 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 that's awesome. But you have... Let's see what some of these other units are. This is in a, uh, in a Ziploc bag. Oh, that's, that's, uh, that's Chuck from Dragon Con. We can't say, we can't say Ziploc because that's uh, copyright. a copyright zip top bag. So, uh, also, yeah, the only uh, new thing in there is, is the mountain that rides, and his ability is pretty neat. Takes four wounds at the start of this model's activation and may make a free maneuver action. Critical blow, panicked. Defenders do not get defense saved. Defenders Ooh, do not what? get defense saves. Holy Shit. Moses. So you're panicked, so you're already going to have to make the... Uh Leadership roll. Yep, but you can't make defense saves. So you're. So there's say, no point in rolling so, so, leadership because so you're dead. You'll you'll have to make your panic rolls. You'll have to make everything else, but you can't make defense saves. Oh, oh my god, god, it's so cool. So yeah, this is the coolest sculpt of, of all of them, the mountain that rides. This is awesome. Besides the uh, throne, the, the, the throne itself. So yeah, so that's what comes in the hand of the king box there, which I will be getting back. No. Sometime. No. Um, let's just open one yeah, more. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll paint it up for you. Yeah. Well, let's that just open easy. one more because otherwise it's going to be like a six hour long box here. I actually want to see what's in the cabinet. Let's open that. Set. I mean, Since, I haven't seen what's in that. Well, yep. So we, he still we has. Played, the, we played with all this other stuff. I, I'm actually going to play this game, so I'm actually not going to. I mean, I'm going to keep this and, you know, I'm not worried about collectible value or anything like that. But, um,. We will play with that stuff eventually. Yeah. Like I said, you're just getting a lot of the sculpts and a lot of the cards and the extra trays and all that stuff. This, I'm not even sure what's in here. Um, where is the... And it's my understanding there's even more coming out that's shipping in October yeah. for yeah. this game. Well, right now, this is... this, so is, this is, is only just wave one. This is only Stark versus Lannisters. I mean, yeah. we don't have the Bolton sets. We don't have the... Um, uh, there, there's a couple other factions that haven't even been represented in here yet. So, wow. I, I don't think we can read. I'm not sure I can um, read that. Japanese. But that's really cool. Uh, open that for me? Because I apparently Yes, I boss. And then these are going to be your, your sword captains. These are, they look metal. They're not. They're plastic. Um, 
Again, the detail is really, really cool. These are special edition. Oops, my finger doesn't work. The detail is incredible on these. So we don't need Russian. We don't need French. German. Show us the red no. one. Oh, yeah. No. Okay. Oh, there we go. There we go. English. Boom. Done. So, that is just really cool. I love the waves in the, in the banner there. And these are done in a metallic in, um, injection mold. Yep. Or again, again it's still plastic, but you know, yeah. still really, really neat. So there, so there are several different cards with that come with it, and they're all in different languages, like Russian and Chinese and Mandarin and Spanish and all that. And, yeah. But basically, you have the gray one is your sword captain, and your red one is your assault veteran. So this one is a Stark, this one's a Lannister. And they have some uh, different abilities as well that, that kind of work with in their unit. So basically what you would do is you would put these in rank one, position one of your unit, and the unit would get these abilities as well. So it's from what I understand. Pretty cool stuff. They gave these away when you actually demoed the, the game at uh, CMON Con or CMON Expo. Either way. Either yeah. way. Um, haven't opened it for six uh, for like five months because yeah, that was in May. Back in so May. Um, really, really cool stuff. So that, my friends, is a song of ice and fire. I really think I should make Danny paint that, just because. That'll be the easiest thing I've ever painted. Yeah, just a dry brush. But anyway, yeah. So. Let us know what you think about this. This is your t YouTube channel, right? It is. It is. Why am I talking? No, because it's your game. You're right. It is my game. Yeah. Let us know what you think on Danny's YouTube channel, The Flaming Meeple. I am not The Flaming Meeple. He is. I'll let him talk. Back to you, Danny. Hi, I'm back. Um, so, yeah. I, uh, I'm, I'm going to go to Gigabytes, maybe, if uh, Addy gives me permissions to, uh, to buy this. If, uh, if You don't need it. Chris already has it. I'm the only one you're ever going to play this with. That's not totally true. Where are you going to put it all? This is a lot of pieces. You see the bits in a box. It's in a large box. We saw the box. Finish the basement the and then we'll talk. Okay, fine. Ooh. No, I'll get this and then I'll finish the basement. Got it. No, no, no. Deal. Finish the basement and then we'll talk. No, that's, that's, yeah, that's what I said. I'll get this and then I'll finish the basement. I'm not in this conversation. They know where I Someone does down. have a birthday coming up, so maybe they should finish the basement first. For his birthday, you get to finish the basement. Yes, manual labor. That's what I love. Um, yeah, let's yep. get all these put away. These are these units are going to run about twenty-five to forty bucks a piece. Um, if you did not back the Kickstarter, like, uh, the Kickstarter was one hundred and fifty dollars, and you get everything, which was awesome. Yes. Uh, season two comes out in October or November. Yep. And there's going to be some extra stuff that comes with that as well, but. We will get this to the table, and we will show you how this is played eventually after you get the basement taken care of. Absolutely. Probably I, not live. I, I like... Definitely yeah, not live. Yeah, we want to be able to edit it because, because we made so many mistakes. There, there, there's going to be some frustration. He keeps and... talking over me, and um, I keep on looking at the wrong camera while I'm talking, so I'm not exactly sure what I'm supposed to do. It's like... Uh... Ricky Bobby and uh, Talladega Nights not knowing what yes, supposed to do like, the same. That, like that exactly. Maybe where we don't have lights like reflecting <laughs> yeah. on me. Yeah, we, like will, we will play it not in the dining room. As you can see, we're not professionals at this. Much at all. Not really. Ever. No. That's part of the appeal. Is this the first time the Flaming Meeple's gone live? Yeah. I think, th I think so. First time Flaming Meeple's gone live. So you usually just record your stuff and then just kind of edit yeah, it. Yeah, take out all the stupid yeah. stuff. Well, you can still do that. He will probably still edit this I video. Won't. He should. That's too much work. He should edit this video because there's a lot of ums and ahs and uh and a bunch of dead space and all where I'm stuttering all over myself. Yeah. He should take that out. No. There's some creative camera work too. Creative camera work too. Yeah. We're going to have to learn. We're learning this as we go. Uh, that's that's pretty video. much, yeah. I'm just standing here. You, you all get to suffer. Um, do you want to play something? Nyctophobia? Well, we, 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 let's be honest. I'm not going to do it on camera. Well, no shit. All right, so you sign can't off. You say that. Sign this off. This is a family show. It's he my said, channel. He I... said a bad word on his own show. No, the kids are asleep. Anyway. Bite you me. don't know. You, they can watch this later. You don't know. Anyway, <laughs> I am Chris with Citizen and Relic. Um, thank you very much for, for watching me and when open my game. I really appreciate it. 
That's Danny. He's I'm Danny channel. Flaming Bill. I will have a link for his Etsy store in the description below. Um, as well as links for everything we've opened if you want to read more about it. Um, for Nyctophobia if you want to buy it. it smells um, like wood. You would like the smell of wood. <laughs> um, You're big I, I don't know if Nyctophobia it is... Uh, oh, it will. It is only at Target. I haven't really checked anywhere else because Target's closer. Um, but if it's at your local game store, definitely buy it from your local game store. Uh, support the small guy. Support the local game um, stores. Screw Target. Sai, we're talking about you. Yeah. Support your local game stores. Um, Andrew so, Kaplan, we're talking about you. Support your local yeah. game stores. Can't support FCB anymore. Can't support FCB. FCB. Chris Gilmore. If you were around... You. We'd still say we will support you, no uh, matter what he says. The yeah. other guy, forget him. Yeah, but no, totally. But I, I, I would buy everything from FCB. Love FCB. Nobody knows what FCB is. That's okay. Anyway, we were trying to sign off for five minutes. Forever right? closed, biatch. Yep. You cussed again. I'm Chris. He's not. Nope. Um, links below for everything you saw here. Link for his Etsy shop. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and thumbs up. Subscribe or else. Subscribe, like. I did. Hit the bell. So I can see that I'm on TV.